Right. So, uh, hey, you guys want to come in here? All right, I tried. Anyway, so hi, this is the fan art purpose, process, and place in the fandom panel. Thank you guys for selecting to come to us. I know we're competing with a lot, so this means a lot. Thank you for being here. Um, we're going to keep this super loose, so if you have any questions, feel free to raise your hand and we'll get to you. So um, we're going to start with introductions. I'm Sanrixian, and um, I am the mother of dragons, and I'm an infinite miss meme maker, meme maker in the community. Wow, I can't even get my words out today. So that's me. And I'm really excited, which is why I'm bumbling. Okay, I'm uh, Butterfly. Um, I, I have a blog on Tumblr at nobody suspects the butterfly.tumblr.com. Um, I help uh, run um, A Song of Ice and Fire University, which is a Tumblr blog that collects uh, discussion posts um, from the fandom um, across Tumblr. We've got over 10,000 posts right now. It's a very good resource if you ever want to check it out. Um, Joanna will go some more about that. Um, so I'm Joanna Lannister. Um, I have a Tumblr blog as well, um, just joannalannister.tumblr.com. Um, and unlike everyone else up here, I am not the creative person. I cannot draw. <laughs> I am just a patron of the arts, like a good lady of cash rock <laughs> thank you <laughs> hi i am vanessa cole i'm a writer for watchers on the wall and i'm also a, an artist and you can find me on twitter at vk cole artist and she's got a booth here she's selling yes, some of I her do. prints come see me in the marketplace at the watchers on the wall booth <laughs> Her drawings are gorgeous. Um, I'm Jean Tate. I don't have a blog or anything like that, but um, I'm a I'm a burgeoning artist, and uh, Game of Thrones was my gateway drug into fan art, so that's why I'm here, and I put together the slideshow. Excellent. Great. So, yeah. Um, so, Joanna, you claim not to be an artist, but you are all an excellent writer, which I also feel like is very Oh, close. thank you. I, I, that, that, I think some people would find that debatable, including myself. True, but thank true. You. True, but <laughs> you do good photoshops. I do. I am very proud of my photoshops. Hey, that's that's a skill. That's a skill in itself. So, um, some of the things that I wanted to go over in this panel panel is um, kind of like to get you guys familiar with actually like what is fan art, and obviously fan art is fan created content. So, all, the biggest question that I get asked all the time is like, how can you make content that is created technically by somebody else, George R. R. Martin, and actually like basically stand behind it and be like yeah I'm an artist and here's what I do and usually the way that I answer that is I'm like oh well here's what I do I am inspired by a scene to create a piece of work to create a moment to give a visual understanding to this moment of literature so I just kind of wanted to get uh, Vanessa's opinion butterflies opinion your opinion Joanna Jean here's too like how do you feel when people come up to you and they ask you like what's it like to be a fan artist like what is what what do you come back with? Like, how do you explain your position as a fan artist or a fan art supporter? Okay. Like, what is, yeah, kind of makes sense. I, I think, I mean, any art you create is, it has to be from something that inspires you. And so whether that's um, something in nature or a, a photograph of something that you've taken, or if it's, you know, a, a still from a movie or a TV show or uh, a scene described in literature, I, I don't think it really matters where this source comes from, as long as it's something that uh, really motivates you to want to create a work of art from that and express how it makes you feel. Yes. I think that's really the whole meaning behind art is just an expression of something that you feel inside and who you are as a person. Yes, yes. I, I really appreciate that you said that because that's kind of the thing. Like, whatever inspires you is what you need to be creating. So, you know, like, when we create Game of Thrones or A Song of Ice and Fire fan art, it's like I have all these scenes and these details from the books that I know so intimately because I've read them five or six times. But the visual portrayal of them, yes, we have the show, but we don't have all the moments of the show. We don't have all the characters. We don't have Joanna Lannister, that's for sure. <laughs> um, so it's like that, kind of, we kind of fill in that void that empty space as fan artists so yeah um, anybody else want to talk about kind of like what inspires you yeah I, I just like a recent example is uh, the second episode of this this last season when Podrick sang Jenny of Old Stones I could not get it out of my brain I mean I've just sang it to myself over and over again and the next day I the the image of her dancing on these old stones so I I, I went and found an image of a house that had you know fallen to ruin but there was still this like spiral staircase made of stone left 
and I painted it and it, it it's not a great painting but um, but it was just like I couldn't I, I I had to produce something that connected to that I just I felt obsessed by it and and that's that's what it feels like to be a fan artist there's something that sparks you and then you just have to do it and then a big part of that is being able to share within the community like yes. being able to be like okay post to Twitter, post to Tumblr, you know, like, let's see what everybody thinks. And usually, you know, there's a couple of people who are like, oh, you should, you know, refine X or Y detail to make it closer to book canon or make it closer to this canon. And you try to honor those requests. So, Joanna, as a person who likes fan art, how do you, um, like, what, what, what is the purpose, I would say, that fan art serves for you? Well, I definitely think that Jean had a point when it's kind of like a part of the obsession. It's mm -hmm. like, definitely, it's a, a lot of things, are, there's some things that you everyone finds that something's really resonating with you I mean I doubt that everyone would be here if there wasn't something that you found in the show or the books that really really resonated with you very strongly and I think that fan art is one way to express that and one way to like kind of get those feelings out and to kind of really just kind of grab hold of them it's like something that you can kind of phys physically like if you've made a painting or at least be able to look at if you have something digital that you can kind of you you can grab, grapple with those feelings and kind of come to make kind of like have some physical manifestation of them but I don't even share all my fan art that I buy I kind of sit on it and hoard it like a dragon that's fine <laughs> you can be a fan art dragon butterfly what do you um, well I mean my own um, A Song of Ice and Fire fan mm -hmm. art is pretty limited at the moment um, my creative work um, my, my excuse me my visual artistic creative work is a little bit limited I've been mostly writing okay. um, but I collect ton I, I just need to find all the fan art and share it with everybody um, I just love finding especially uh, underserved characters I mean I have my favorite characters everyone has their favorites and you know but and I and I collect a lot of a lot of sense of fan art yes uh, <laughs> but I, I love finding rare characters as well um, I saw a uh, painting of Selwyn Tarse the other day and oh, I don't wow. think I have ever seen a piece of fan art of him before and that was just 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 amazing to find and I was like I need to share this with people yeah um, yeah that's great and you know just the just visualizations of certain scenes you know just imagining what they would look like visually especially ones that the show didn't cover is just you know just finding that and you know just enjoying that and sharing it with other people is just something I love to do. Yeah. I actually had a, a customer come up to me at my booth at Ice and Firecon last year and asked me if I had any of the fan art of the bald guy and I was like, I'm sorry, you're going to have to try again. <laughs> There's quite a few bald characters in Game of Thrones and they were wanting Varys mm -hmm. and I'd never thought to make a piece of Varys fan art until that very moment. So <laughs> every character, somebody's favorite character, every character. Yeah. So, so another question I had here, um, or for the panel was um, who or what is your biggest influence as a fan artist or what do you look for in fan artists so Jean would you like to well, uh, like uh, putting together this this slideshow um, if you just go on to Pinterest and put in Game of Thrones artwork the the range that the from tiny little knitted things and needle pointed things to there's there's this huge dragon carved uh, it's a bench that looks like a dragon carved out of wood and and everything in between it's just it boggles my mind the massive amounts of creativity that that go into it it's just it fascinates me and also just in the marketplace here yeah. i'm sure you guys yeah. have noticed like how much diversity there is in the offerings there's carved drinking horns there's leather goods there's replica swords even like anime posters and stuffed plushies i'm just blown away by everybody's creativity it's really great yeah. vanessa um i don't know that there's any one particular influence on me and and how i create my art um but i'm really drawn to artists who are very different from from my style um you know i love your work i've seen rick seen this is gorgeous i love um <laughs> boobog if you're i don't know if you're familiar with boobog but she does yes. some really wonderful uh drawings um she does a lot of sansa and the hound uh just gorgeous um so i love lots of really colorful bright um 
drawings from from other artists, which is pretty different from what I do. I, I usually do pencil, uh, do try to do some color work, but um, I. I really just try to develop my own style. I, I do try to make it as realistic as possible, and I, I found the longer I do it, the more focused on all of the details I become, and so I'm constantly striving to make it as lifelike as possible. But, um, but like I said, I, I draw inspiration from just looking at all the different types of art that are out there and, and seeing how um, other artists express themselves and find my own ways to do that. Now, Vanessa, I had wondered, since you mentioned it, um, would you consider yourself a hyper-realist? Um, I didn't start out thinking that, but uh, I, I think it's becoming more and more within that realm. I definitely think you're yeah, so very good at realism. When you have people accuse you of just uh, photoshopping uh, a picture <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and not actually drawing anything, I, I guess that put you in that category. Yes. So, yes. Yeah. Do people really say that to Yeah, you? I've had people. Oh, <laughs> rude. To the point where I'll take a picture of the drawing on the paper with the background behind it. and you know, Here it is on the paper, paper pad. You know, I drew this. So, unfortunately, yeah. in the digital world, where it is very easy to do that, and I do see people do that and post right. it on, let you know, Etsy. I'm sure you guys all do. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's that's a disclaimer. Do not take show footage, Photoshop it, and try to sell it. That will get you in trouble. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I you should, <laughs> in some weird way. Um, Jean, so for you, my question would be, um, what do you look for in fan artists? Like, do you have any? favorite fan artists that you really get to? Um, uh, well, I, I've I'm come so to sorry. Know. Did I say Jean? I meant yeah. Joanna. Oh, well, sorry. Oh, okay. oh, we're going <laughs> all the way down. I'm so sorry. No, that's okay. Um, so when I'm looking for it, usually what my, the first thing that um, I look for is can someone design clothes that don't look like the show? Like right. literally that's the first thing that I look for is if they can do some costume design or something because usually what I'm trying to do is I, I'm find, trying to find all these costume references and I'm trying to get someone who can actually design some things that I have in mind um, as I would throw too much money at these things because yes, <laughs> yes. I'm throwing money at people, different people here. But and we appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, but I, I look for someone who can kind of make my vision come true rather than just show something like from the show scene. So usually it's like someone who's and I, I also one of the other big things that I look for is someone who can communicate well with me because I've, I've commissioned a lot of different people and some people are much easier to talk to than other people and so like the people who are easier to talk to I've gone back and gone like gotten three or four or five different commissions versus the people who I just somehow they just kind of want to do their own thing and I can't they they want to they don't really want to listen to me at all I, I usually don't go back to those people no that's that's actually really mm -hmm. interesting that you bring that up because like I do 3d animation and rendering for my day job and then I have fun with my Game of Thrones, A Song of Ice and Fire fan art. So I understand 100% what it's like to be on both sides, to be the client mm -hmm. and asking for things. And let me tell you, like, there is a way to communicate with people. <laughs> and there's a certain amount of changes that oh, you Oh, no, do. definitely. No, but on the other side, I totally understand. Like, there's some, peop some people who want, like, 10 changes after some artist shows something and right. like that I mean you have to be considerate of the people's time and stuff but I mean like there's some like I would tell people in the beginning okay I want Jamie and Cersei with green eyes and then the person comes back to me and it's brown-eyed Cersei Lannister or something and I'm like but that isn't what I asked for and I'd like you to change that and they're going well you can't change that because you've just paid me and I'm, I've already done this and I'm not going to allow any changes I, okay, did, I so didn't go back to that person for the audience if you are commissioning artwork be very clear with your requests if you are an artist in the audience um, please make sure you double check your notes yes <laughs> I, I would say I am so guilty of doing things like that and usually if I catch it I will obviously fix it for the cup for the person. yeah 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 that seems a little weird, but yeah yeah um butterfly what do you look for in your fan art um personally um i just <laughs> I have a uh, certain, I would say, old favorites. Um, I associate fan art very strongly with the books because uh, right after I read them the first time out of the library, um, we also got the um, the collection, The Art of a Song of Ice and Fire. Um, 
So it was literally those visualizations in that book kind of stuck with me for many of the characters. Um, Jenny Dolphin, I don't know if you know her. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Jenny Dolphin, she's done a lot of Lord of the Rings fan art. Um, she had these beautiful artworks of the Starks um, around Old Nan, um, of John and Arya together. Um, and just these long faced John and Arya with their, you know, straight their dark stark hair. Faces. With their straight yeah. dark hair yeah. and the and the telly looking ones like Sansa and Bran and Rickon and just those visualizations are like those are like the permanent yeah. appearances in my in my head, so to speak, because I read them so close to reading I mean I saw them so close to reading the books for the first time. Yeah. And um, so, you know, old classics like that, so to speak. Um, the uh, Russian artist um, Amok, who um, illustrated uh, the Targaryens for for George. Well, it was for Fantasy Flight Games, but he literally spoke. He, he emailed George and like asked for descriptions of all the Targaryen kings and notable personages like the Maidens in the Tower and the Great Bastards and uh, Rhaenyra and such. Mm -hmm. And um, and, and his Targaryens are my Targaryens. Yeah. So <laughs> it's like you know we all we all have our associative like that. Um, are, and when you're talking about those, those are the ones that when you generally like look on the wikis. Yeah, they, exactly. they're usually, like, the wiki. I love those because like when I'm reading, I don't really visualize faces. I usually like I'm imagining like more of an idea of a person than a person uh, themselves. So then w what all of these people do is that they actually give me a face that I can kind of think about when I'm reading. So I really appreciate. That. Yeah, it's, it's, we serve that purpose, and and people would wonder. Like we were talking about Bran this morning at a panel on Bran, and I was like, man, Bran, you know, like in the books, he really looks like a southern, a southerner. He looks like a Tolly. So him as king is going to have this completely different implication. And then it's like, oh, as a fan artist, I can fill that role. I can draw draw an all older Bran that looks like the way he will actually look when he grows up. Mm -hmm. With I don't know, with wild hair, like red hair, like a yeah. like a heart, like a where would tree it'll look like a werewood tree yeah <laughs> yes. um gene do you want to tell the people about the beautiful slideshow that you've made that you're playing as oh, i just realized uh, maybe we should have introduced that at <laughs> I, I mentioned it but um it's it's got some of san rixian's art and oh convenient i'm right how, up there yeah, right there now. you are is that, which i love and, and vanessa's Vanessa's art. right there <laughs> and some of my creations which uh there's some of mine um and it's and then I just like went on Pinterest and went online and like I said the the volume of stuff is just incredible. There's a another artist who's here today, but she's uh, at another panel. Um, Simone Green, who some of her work. Oh, here it is, right here. She um, she reimagines the characters. Like in this case, it's like a um, a black exploitation movie poster. Oh, you know, so awesome. it's Cersei. And she's a bad brother. <laughs> <laughs> I love and, all and, the. And you know, I'm like. Where did that? How do you meld those two ideas in your brain? I just think that's so beautiful and so cool. And here's someone who put in the Starbucks cup. <laughs> <laughs> the um, interesting thing is that you know, even though I love you know book accurate characters, so to speak, I also love the alternate universe ones. There was uh, somebody who did Mad Max uh, Fury Road versions of the characters that are that's absolutely great. fantastic, and you know the uh, Sandor Clegane with like you know that mask uh, with like a spiked mask on his face and uh, Daenerys as a uh, as a, uh, like Furiosa but with like her hair and like a you know her and a mohawk oh and, that'd be cool and the grease on her forehead and it's just like the most amazing depictions of the characters yeah. one of my favorite pieces of fan art is this art of Daenerys like tiny book Daenerys on um, this huge massive Harley and I really I just I, I felt like even though it's obviously an alternate universe I thought that that really captured the spirit of like riding a dragon kind that's of. her Drogon mm -hmm. yeah. oh yeah yeah Vanessa do you have a favorite piece of fan art while we're on the topic oh gosh uh, my favorite piece or just one that resonates with you that you remember or uh, well you know I mentioned Boo Bug oh yeah and, Boo Bug um, the one Beautiful. with it's the hound when he gets burned during his fight with Beric Dondarrion yes and it is just it's gorgeous and there are so many little details like little easter eggs you can find in the background of the photo or the of the, the drawing and it's just 
the longer you look at it, the more you fall in love with it. And it just, it really kind of stuck with me. So yeah, that's, that's probably your one of my drawings. Favorites. That's your drawings to me. Like you can just stare <laughs> at them for hours. Mm-hmm. Booba oh, is like you. my absolute, I mean, of, of current, you know, active artists, because Gold said, uh, Jenny Dolphin doesn't draw very often these days. Um, but of current active fan artist, Booba is like perfection. <laughs> Hey, what was uh, your question? Well, not really a question, but I think it's not done um, in during the German group, but, but I think um, George Martin makes it sort of easy because he, he can picture the words mm-hmm. and, and some of the stuff that I've done were I want to stay away from HBO and, and, and create something from the words and he just makes it really easy to, to do the work. Yeah, he is. He definitely spoils us with his visual descriptions because he paints this complete picture. So I'm like, oh, I don't really have to do much resourcing or, you know, like research in my preliminary sketches. I know what he tells me. But the magic, like with George, is that he does like I think he does just the right amount of description because I've read other books where they describe just everything and it gets really boring and you get really bogged down whereas George he does these like quick snatches where he can paint a whole world in a sentence like there's this um, there's this line in A Dance with Dragons where it's like the the, the underworld of the fighting pits like where what is it where Tyrion is and it, yeah. it's just like one paragraph but it's like this whole, you have this whole picture of those fighting pit the, the place where the slaves are under the fighting pits and it's just you have this whole visualization of it just from this one line or something almost smell it yeah yeah the um the interesting thing about george beyond his um you know ability to paint pictures with words is that he himself is uh, a huge art patron on his own website he has a collection of, of fan art that artists sent to him and almost from the very beginning he um allowed fan art in the form of the um fantasy flight games um uh card game and I think the first, I believe the first set of it came out in 98. Um, a lot of them were not per- perfect. Um, some of the artists were commissioned and not given a lot of information. There is an unfortunate blonde Renly oh. that was part of the first set. <laughs> uh, it is, it is, it, it's, it's very well done. It just doesn't look like Renly at all. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> And but it, that that card set they've done revisions and such and they've they keep putting out new art every every new card sets every couple of months and they've been you know commissioning be better and better artists to do it and a lot of that art ended up in the um, illustrated edition of the Game of Thrones that came out a couple of years ago. Um, and then, of course, there's his calendar, the, the A Song of Ice and Fire calendar that comes out every year, where they have one artist do a full calendar. Um, the, the one year was just like the castles of Westeros, mm-hmm. and, and this one that's coming out for 2020 is going to be um, the mythical creatures. Oh, I'm excited about that one. Yes, yeah, yeah, definitely gonna, excited about that one. Yes, yeah, from the uh, from the unicorns of Skagos to the dragons to uh, ice dragons and who knows what else is going to be in there. And I'm just like, you know, it's the most fantastic thing. And the fact that George has like literally approved of this art from the very beginning. He yeah, has, his house is full of it. It's fascinating to me that he approves of art. And for me, as an artist, and this may be not the correct thing to say but as an artist i'm very impressed by writers if you can put sentences together you impress me like i cannot write to save my butt so (laughs) the fact that george approves of fan art and is okay with fan art but has interestingly different feelings on fanfic fanfic, (laughs) kind of is rough for me because i don't know how to i think because it it overlaps his own work too much i understand that it's like interfering and playing with his barbie dolls essentially yeah yeah Yeah. It, only he is allowed to make his Barbie dolls kiss. Yeah, only his Barbies can kiss. That's definitely for sure. <laughs> <laughs> 
he gets to choose who kisses in Game of Thrones. Right. But like you mentioned, like you guys were mentioning George and his collection of art uh, last year at Worldcon. I had um, I commissioned um, you know the artist Victograph. Mm-hmm. Um, I commissioned art of it was Rayella, Joanna, Cassana, Estermont, and the um, unnamed princess of Dorne because we were all trying to get a name for the unnamed princess of Dorne, and I th- we we all were like, well, if I give George this fan art, maybe that I commissioned, maybe he'll like name her, but we still have not gotten a name even in the even in the new folio society books with all the extra artwork and extra stuff in it the, the, the we, I've been, yeah we still have not gotten a name an attempt was made it was <laughs> he, he seemed to be cool with receiving fan art though yeah yeah that's uh that's great that's good to know i should mail him some stuff is that what you're saying yeah you vanessa should. you want to go in together yeah sounds good Gene, you in? You in? Okay. <laughs> so um we kind of went over the history of fan art thank you butterfly yeah, and no kind of like the purpose like um i didn't directly ask like what we think the purpose is but i think it's pretty clear that we use it to kind of fill in the blanks on our imagination and also to make our essays look great <laughs> Um, so I guess like a process, like the process of creation, um, does anybody have any thoughts or things that they'd like to share about their process? Vanessa Jean, maybe? Um, please. As, as far as my process, I, you know, I just either someone, sometimes people do commission me for mm-hmm. pieces, either they'll want a, a scene from the show or a character, um, or they'll, you know, I've had people ask for book characters. And so if it's, if it's not something from the show, then I usually go to the, um, a song of ice fire wiki to re- reread the description. If I can't remember off the top of oh, my head, just because I, I always want to make sure that I get the details correct. Mm-hmm. Um, and then if they have, you know, certain parameters, say, want I, I make sure to take those into account as well um, but because my work uh, I usually try to make it very realistic looking um, a lot of times I'll look at different reference photos as far especially for faces like if there's um, a character who I, as I'm reading a lot of times I'll picture like if I were casting this as a movie or a show like who would I pick and so um, a lot of times I'll look for that that actor or actress um, just some get some good shots of, of how I think they might look as the character and use those as references as I'm drawing um, as far as um, things from the show I, I try to find a really high quality picture so that I can zoom in and get like all of the detail in my picture as I'm drawing but uh, but it's yeah it's a long process it, it takes several hours uh, usually a week or a couple weeks depending on how much free time I have so um, um, what do you, do you usually work with pencils charcoal? I usually do pencils um, I have you know varying hardness so mm-hmm. I can get you know really light and really dark and everything in between um, and then I do some colored pencils work and occasionally I will paint although it's a lot more time consuming mm-hmm. and messy and uh, <laughs> harder to take with you if you want to kind of do it on the go so uh, but yeah like I said it, it just before I get started I just want to make sure that I ha- really have a good idea in mind of, of how I want to go about doing doing my picture do you do any prelim- preliminary drafts or sketches or do you just dive right into it? I just dive right into it I do a lot of erasing <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, and then there, there are times where I've had to just kind of scrap it and start over if I, you know, I can't erase anymore. So, um, but yeah, you do wear through the paper. Yeah, the yeah. There, there comes a point where you just can't do it anymore. You ruin the picture completely. Um, but yeah, I just I start with a line drawing, and it's funny because you know I'll, sometimes I'll post just the line drawing, and people are like amazed that I get from that to my finished product, and. It's funny to me because I amaze myself at times. Like I'd, when I share things, I don't normally share them. Be like, oh, look how great I am. It's more like, oh my gosh, you guys, I can't believe I I made this thing. Look, look at the <laughs> like, thing I made, cool? please. <laughs> so, so yeah, it's um, it's it's just I, I think it's just so interesting what you're able to do with with art and with uh, mm-hmm. the materials that you have and how you can really just transform a simple piece of paper into something beautiful. And um, just for a rough estimate, because I'm curious, how long would you say one of your pencil portraits takes? Um, if it's if it's got the background with it too. Yep. Probably at least fifteen hours. Probably more than that. It just it just depends on how detailed I want to make it. Mm-hmm. All right, that's awesome. Thank you for sharing Thanks. that with us. Jean, same question. Um, it's 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 kind of like the the painting I did of the old stones. It's it's like if I get an idea in my head, then I just find a way to create it. Like the 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 thing that started me was, and it 
to me it's embarrassing <laughs> to even say, but I was watching Game of Thrones and I thought, I need to make a drunk Cersei Barbie. <laughs> and so I, 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 I'm not this an adult who plays with Barbies. I, I went online. You know how hard it is to find a Barbie who's not smiling? I mean, it's, it's tough. <laughs> and, I, and I got this Barbie and I got some velvet and I made this little dress and then I got a little wine goblet and put it in her hand. <laughs> and and then, then it became an obsession. I started making all the different characters and, and I, I'm not someone who has sewn since I was in junior high. I'm not someone who collects dolls as an adult. And then, uh, then I started making Game of Thrones jewelry and then I started making dragon's eggs and dragon eyes and, and, and just like every, and then I'm painting and it's just, it's like opened this whole world for me of, of creative expression and it, it's, it just has to, I feel like it has to come out of me, you know? <laughs> do you primarily work with one medium or do you just kind of do lots of different? Lots of different. Yeah, you're jack of all trades, multimedia well, yeah, master. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right, own it. All right, yeah. <laughs> um, for me, I guess like, I do, I like to do different scenes from the books. A lot of the time I'm working live, so I'm painting in Photoshop. I'm more primarily a digital artist. Um, so I do digital painting, and then by day I do 3D rendering, and I make really boring renderings of furniture that nobody wants to talk about. <laughs> um, so, do you ever cross the streams? Do you ever? I do through? try to cross the streams. Um, in one rendering, I snuck in a guy who looks like Azora Hype and put a stack of Game of Thrones book props on the shelf. <laughs> um, Sneaking it in there. And I was like, nobody will notice this. And the client ended up being like, can you take those books out? And I was like, oh. <laughs> it just like, it broke my heart because I wanted to send it to Kyle at the end of the day and be like, hey, look, it's you. <laughs> um, it just was complete coincidence that I had this stock model of a gentleman who happened to favor Kyle so that was really funny um or do you think of ever 3d rendering anything from the, from the books or show oh yeah that's that's like my dream mm -hmm. like if I could do right now if I could quit my day job and just make YouTube intros for all of my favorite youtubers that would just be the best thing ever hello Lucas of house black mean mm -hmm. what can I do for you you have your idea in mind, did you ever feel like it's, it just takes itself over and you're just kind of Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Sometimes um, you get just like taken into it. Like I'll start with a vague idea or concept, and I, I'm sure these ladies will agree with me. Like what I have in my head is never what ends up on the final. Like that Liana shirt you got there, that was not my original intention. Please hold it up for the audience to see. Thank you. <laughs> Liana Stark. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's lovely. She's beautiful. the queen of love and beauty. I think I. I must have to reblog that. I'm, I'm oh, yeah, you did. It. Okay. You did. I, I got the notification. Okay. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Butterfly's great. Um, yeah, but it's it's one of those things where um, I work much more freely than Vanessa does, so I don't have kind of like a structured end game. I have a little bit more leeway where, because I'm not going for something as realistic. I'm going for something more representational. Um, so I'll change and move stuff, and the beauty of the digital age is so much easier to do. And yes, I have have worn my paper down to the point where it doesn't erase anymore. I did go to traditional art school, thank you. But yeah, it's uh, I do a lot of preliminary drafts. I'm one of those people who draws and draws and draws and draws and can never quite get it right and then pull something out of those roughs. But I also have known friends who can just straight lay out perfect line work for a final on the first time. It's very wow. interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I'm a gardener. <laughs> yes. Thank you. That's beautiful. What a gift I have today. <laughs> um, and also, like, I had a, a note here about some, like, research uh, tools for um, upcoming artists. Always use reference. I mean, Vanessa is going to harp it on you guys just as much as I would. Jean, always use reference, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, like, we're so blessed that we have this agent day where we can just Google something. Oh, the, like, um, I'm actually working on an, a visual art piece currently as a present for someone. And you're using reference? I'm using reference. I found on um, DeviantArt uh, Senshi stock had a gorgeous perfectly exactly what I had in mind and that you know I'm just gonna I'm gonna look at that and it's just going to be it's like it was just 
I don't know. It was just it was just perfect. It was it what just, you're looking for? Yes, it just matched the idea in my head exactly. And I was like, but how does one hold up a sword like that? And you know, just finding that is just like perfect. Oh yeah, I will admit, ninety percent of my like Google reference image searches are how to man holding sword or woman yes. holding sword. <laughs> yes. And expositions are so yeah. hard to yes. get just right. Yes. <laughs> one of the, okay, so I'm like always trying to find references for the people that I want to commission, and one of the things that I do is I like to go through um, those old Hollywood movies uh, that there's all the the old Camelot type, the thing that the things that like Georgia said, these are too nice and fluffy, and so I go through those, but they have great costumes and things, and I'm always going through that to look for like because usually in um, older movies they have like more people in them, and it's more of a set piece because mm-hmm. they couldn't move the camera as easily because it was a big camera, so they have kind of more of a distance, and they'll have full shots, and they'll have all these people arranged, and I usually like to go through that and try and find references that way. That's wonderful. That's the smart, fact yeah. that you actually give references to your to the people that you're hiring is fantastic. Thank you. People don't give you references? No. No, 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 <laughs> That's no. That's sad. I go on the Wikipedia, as Vanessa said, and we make sure we get every single detail right, because if you get one fingernail wrong, <laughs> somebody on the internet will call you out. Then that's... Uh, I, I edit the wikis to make sure that it's, you know... Thank you. Correct. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> but Thank when you. I'm, like, commissioning someone, I'm, like, down to... Yes, and I want the fingernails like this. So yes, yes. I'm, I'm, very, I'm very particular. I was, like, looking at somebody's article, and I was like, wait, we know his hair and eye color, and they're not in this article. I should put them in there. And to be fair, George does forget some of the characters' yes, hair he and does. eye color, so... He changes them. Yeah, yeah he does. He does and do that. there are some characters who he's just literally never described yeah. at all, so... Um, so, yes, he is great with his visual descriptions, but sometimes he gets a little bit... Yeah. Grateful. We will share him that. Madeer, Ma- Jinx... My, my son starts. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I was curious about, you know, a lot of us love, love fan art and a lot of us are patrons in terms of, like, really wanting tattoos. So, like, love it so much that we, like, get on our bodies. And I love you describing this because I have a Lord of the Rings tattoo and I spent, like, five pages of reference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is what throws in the veil of a silly blah, blah, blah. So, um, I wanted to ask, as I don't think any of you are tattoo artist and I know there's a lot of people who make art like how do you feel about like do people ever contact you being like can I get this tattoo permanently onto my body what is like appropriate as a fan to contact an artist to ask something like that thanks it's a good question <laughs> so the question was like how do you contact an artist about um, a tattoo or for like just a piece or just a tattoo? Yeah, or like if somebody is, if I want your art, but you're not a tattoo artist, and you want to get it tattooed, and I want to get it. Tattooed, Got it. Like, what is an appropriate? Way to Honestly, I would just go up to the person, like either email or if you're there here in person, I would say, hey, I love your art. Is there any way that would you be okay with me getting a tattoo, or would you design a tattoo for me? Honestly, that's what I would do. But I just go up to anybody that I like that's an artist. I'm going, <laughs> hey, can you get me? Can I get you to draw Tywin Lannister for me? But that, that's literally what I do all the time. So. Uh, that is the best thing because a lot of us artists are little shy muffins and we like need a little bit of a little bit of encouragement a little tap and like hey um oh you like my art you want something sure we can work together an email is generally the best way to get a hold of me because it goes into a nice folder and i can read it and it doesn't get lost in my dm inbox or my text messages or my eight thousand social medias so always like i would recommend emailing um and yeah i mean like tattoos however i will say this as a person with tattoos your ultimate design I would leave up to your tattoo artist I fought with my tattoo artist for six months about my arm piece trust your trust your tattoo artists they wor- <laughs> especially if they've if they've worked for a couple years and then you can come up with something that is designed by an artist and also designed by a tattoo artist so, um, anybody else have anything to question um, I- so, oh, I was sorry. just going to say, um, you know, it's probably pretty easy to take someone's existing piece that's already out on the internet and just use it, but don't do that. Yeah, just don't Please do that. contact them yeah. first. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We really do them, appreciate that. Give them a couple schmeckles and they will be so happy because they worked hard on that. And also, since you brought it up, don't Google image things and just assume that the images that you see are copyright fair use. There's a very kind little button that you can drop down and select filter for reuse without modification on Google 
all those images are fair use. One of the things that I like to do is I like going through like classical art, like art from people who are 200 years dead. And yeah, and, there's no copyright on it. Yeah, and, and, what, I've given a lot of that as references for things mm -hmm. or even just like if there's one particular design and with some piece of artwork that's from 200 years ago, then I'll, I'll like show the artist and I'll say, hey, I really, really like this design. Can you incorporate this in the piece that, I, that I'm doing? Or can you make this the background or can you something like that? And it's like, it's there's it's all fair use. So there's no problems when you do things like that. And what was your question? Um, I have a question for you. So when you draw, um, do you feel like do you start really details on one specific part of your drawing? Or do you kind of just like do one layer all over and then do like a second layer with more detail? And just so... <laughs> I don't know how everyone else says it. Um, I used to just like go left to right, and the only reason was so I didn't smudge the work that I just did. Mm -hmm. um, uh, with if it's um, like a portrait, or you know, there's a character, and then there's the background. Um, I I find that I like to do the person first or the face first because that typically takes me the longest. And then once I'm done with that, I have this sense of like relief. I'm like, okay, I'm almost done now. I just got to do the background. <laughs> um, but I always make sure to kind of protect what I've already done. But yeah. I'll, I'll typically do like the focal point now and then I'll, I'll do the background after. We've got about 10 minutes left, so if anybody else has any questions, fair game, whatever you want to ask us. What can I... Um, I'm actually like a starting artist and I kind of get in late, so I'm not sure if you dress the Like, if you guys end up walking the show, like reading the books first and then I hear you all saying like, well, it's all the art in uh, us and fire But like, is the show thing your views of like, the materials of the... Uh, that is a wonderful question. Thank you for asking that. Um, myself, if you guys don't mind, um, I get accused sometimes of having like an anime style, and I'm not gonna lie, like it's a huge influence on me. However, watching the show did influence me. It didn't change the way that I completely saw things, like especially Jon Snow. Like Jon Snow will always be Rhaegar's son to me, and I think some of his visual descriptions in the book are a dead giveaway that he is part Targaryen. Yes, he looks northern, but his facial structure, his body, he's lithe, he's thin. Not not bashing Kit Harrington. I love Kit Harrington. But when I draw Jon, I don't I don't draw Kit Harrington. I draw a son of Rhaegar. So the show in a way kind of like challenges me to think in a different manner of what HBO cast. Like, yeah, Daenerys, I think Amelia Clark is a great Daenerys. So obviously, naturally, my Daenerys is gonna look a little bit like that. But then we have a whole bunch of characters who aren't even in in the show. So a good way of like, I don't even know what you do to Vanessa when you try to do that. Like find for like book characters? Yeah, what do you do for Well, book I mean, I read the books first. And yeah, so, yeah, me too. So, well, like I said earlier, um, I, I kind of cast characters in my head. Like when I read, it's I'm watching a movie in my mm -hmm. head as I read. So I already have them kind of visualized. And so if someone wants me to draw a book character, I go back and think, okay, who did I kind of picture as I was reading? And whether it's, you know, somebody like well known, like an actor that I pictured or some just an idea of a, of, of a face, um, I'll just look, I'll just look on the internet and try to find pictures of someone who kind of looks like like the picture in my head and I think that's a good way to get started is if you have some kind of idea in mind maybe just put in like a description of the type of person you're looking for and nine times out of ten you'll find something that just really hits you and you're like oh that that's who I am thinking of right there yeah being so an artist teaches you to be a great googler yeah. <laughs> or looking for <laughs> yeah. fan art teaches you to be a great googler and as far as style goes I just say experiment like use your sketchbooks as something that is not going to be your finished product just destroy them like if you're drawing something and you're like, oh, I could push this further, but I don't know if I want to ruin this, take a picture on your phone. It's 2019. We can do that. And then keep going and see where it gets you. Mm -hmm. That would be my advice for style because I never draw consistently. Like, yeah, I have a consistent John in my head, but whatever comes out on the page is always different. Yeah. And I think your style can evolve too. Yes. I, I did not start out trying to draw hyper realistic drawings at all. Like I think the very first ones I did were more cartoon like and I kind of wish I could do that now because it'd be a lot quicker. <laughs> but uh, but it's just the the more I did it, the more like I said, I just gradually tried to incorporate more of those details and so it just really kind of turned into what it is now. So um, I don't I wouldn't say you necessarily have to 
decide what your style is, yeah. just put something on paper and, and see what really kind of inspires you and moves you and um, makes you happy. And like I said, it can certainly evolve over time as well. And just kind of let it go where it goes. Yeah, constantly be growing and evolving. That's the name of the game. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I'm thinking about our culture is that there's been this kind of the opposite of democratization of art where you've got like the tailors where God love her, right? But like that's it, and you go to local bonds and just come in and do it or whatever instead of people just doing their own thing. And I'm a huge fan of both art and fiction as well, and kind of what people are really thinking about. Um, but I just found more fun with anything, but I'm, I'm an amateur and I you know if you go around and people say yesterday someone said to me, oh I think you can do that. And I just think it's just I wish in our culture there was just more dominant messaging about yes you can do that. <laughs> it's just you have to be patient with yourself to say it. You just have to keep trying and you have to be patient. And I bet there's people in this room here that love to do these things because they're not they haven't taken it in and I mean just do it. Like, okay. I think I think that increasing the yeah, you, you never yeah. know what you're capable of. I mean, even if you think you can't draw, just try it. I mean, I, I, I grew up drawing, and um, so you, you can have a talent for it, but that doesn't mean you can't constantly get better. And even if you you don't think you're talented, if you work hard at it, I guarantee you'll see an improvement in something that you actually like. Because um, I, you know, I, I drew growing up, and then I kind of quit for probably a, at least a decade or so, um, just because life happened, and you get busy, and you just kinda, it, it just goes by the wayside. Um, so I started back maybe two, three years ago, and my first drawings, I look back at them now, I'm like, how did I ever let anyone see that? <laughs> it's just like, I get embarrassed by it now, but... You're, you would be amazed like how much you can improve in just a few months' time if you're, if you're constantly working at it. And um, also, what do you looking at it not as, you can't compare it to what, you know, sort of the mass consumer product because that's not really, I mean, either hours of personal growth by the artist or, you know, a panel of people critiquing it to get it to where it is. I think it really requires people not only practicing, but again, the occasion of itself, looking at it not, not, not in that same critical sense. Oh, yeah. Uh, Art is patience, yeah. like and and patience with yourself, and not picking up the sketchbook and throwing it when you get mad. But like <laughs> speaking of artist growth, you know, you, you'll see art. I mean, many artists that I um, that I know will talk about like, oh, my old art was terrible. I don't know why anyone likes it. No, there is somebody who loves your old art. That they're yeah, like, there really is. There, there really, really is. They're like, even if you, Thank you guys. even if your art has evolved dramatically. Trust me when I tell you, somebody will remember that piece you did three years ago and be like, oh God, I love that piece. That's my favorite piece. Yeah, so, just speaking the, of that, sorry, I was just going to say, uh, because I, I told you like some of my older art I was not thrilled with, I actually saw a lady walking around with one of my old um, Tyrion drawings on like a shirt from Redbubble, because I uploaded some of that there. We and so can. I was just in shock that she actually had that. It was just funny. <laughs> I wish I could have caught her. Yeah, it's um, it's one of those things I just wanted to mention. Um, we've only got a couple minutes left, but I wanted to say like anybody in this room, if, if any of you are aspiring artists and you like need guidance or help I don't I can't speak for everybody else but you can hit me up on Twitter I will help you in the best way that I can like I just want to help everybody be the best artist that they can be and do not limit yourselves do not be mad at yourselves just push through and keep going and try and we we have this blessing of social media where we can post and be like look at this cool thing I I made like Vanessa said and it's like a little bit of that will bring you very far oh hello everyone <laughs> welcome to the end of our panel I know you all came for me hi <laughs> so um, any closing thoughts ladies? I, I also want to just add that a part of what makes it so amazing is the process of creating it and and the end product isn't always the important thing it's how it's the mindset that you get in while you're creating something is it's very healthy it's good for your mental health it's good for your physical health and it's 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 a wonderful thing to, and and when you're finished you may not think what you finished is great 
but you will have accomplished something and that feels good too and finishing something is better than not making anything at all because right. even if you, all you have is a painting that you're like mm, maybe I'll put this in my bathroom and turn it around hey <laughs> you spent four hours like productively making something and doing something that made you happy mm -hmm. and it was a healthy process for you and it is it's therapeutic there's entire degrees in art therapy so I, hey. I think I think George would say here like no chance and no choice even if you don't feel like you're gonna do it you have to try anyway I love you Joanna <laughs> you're so wonderful and um, don't don't be afraid to share anything yes. that you create oh, this is a wonderful fandom and everyone is just so kind and so generous and um, just so appreciative of, of what you've put out there so uh, don't be afraid to and thank you guys all for coming to our yeah, panel thank you thank us you. so much thank you thank you uh, Jean Tate Vanessa Cole Joanna Lannister <laughs> no one suspects the butterfly and I'm San Rixi thank, thank you, you. Thank <laughs> you.